Good happy Tuesday evening, July 27, 2021. I'm Riley King, and welcome to the Riley King Newscast, right here on the Riley King Network. We have a lot of news to get to this Tuesday evening, so let's begin. First step, CDC reverses mask guidance for fully vaccinated people. Let's take a listen to that video from CBS News. Good evening and thank you for joining us. We are going to begin tonight with breaking news in the COVID pandemic. The CDC has changed its guidance when it comes to mask wearing for the vaccinated, citing the highly contagious Delta variant. The agency now says people who live in areas where the spread of COVID is high or substantial, even those who receive their vaccine, should wear masks indoors. So tonight, look at this map. That means that new mask guidance covers more than 60% of the country. And we have just learned of this big step from the White House. The administration emailing staff tonight saying they must wear masks regardless of their vaccination status. And with the new school year around the corner, the CDC is recommending all students, teachers, and staff wear masks. And there is late word tonight about a man who was arrested for allegedly sending death threats to Dr. Anthony Fauci. In one email, authorities say the suspect threatened to drag Dr. Fauci and his family into the street, beat them to death, and set them on fire. Well, we've got a lot of pandemic developments tonight, and CBS's Lilia Luciano is going to lead off our coverage with that breaking news. Good evening, Lilia. Good evening to you, Nora. Tonight, the Biden administration announced they will require that all federal employees be vaccinated or be regularly tested. And that announcement is expected as early as Thursday. Tonight, the CDC is urging even those who are fully vaccinated to mask up indoors in areas where COVID transmission is substantial or high. This was not something that we took lightly and something that I know weighs heavily with me. Now, the CDC is also urging masks in schools for everyone. This as COVID cases are rising among kids. Last week, the highest number of newly reported cases affecting children in two months. But masking in schools is also encountering resistance. At least nine states have reportedly banned schools from issuing mask mandates. We're not doing that in Florida, okay? We need our kids to breathe. Today in Broward County, Florida, the school board met to discuss masking as cases rise. And this is what happened. We will not stand for children to be masked anymore. Meanwhile, taking it a step further, the largest university system in the country, Cal State, with nearly half a million students, announced that all of them, plus faculty and staff, must be fully vaccinated to be on campus this fall. There are now more than 600 colleges in the U.S. that have some form of vaccine requirements for returning students. But you just can't get students back into universities safely, into dorm rooms, into classrooms, if a chunk of people are unvaccinated. You're going to see large outbreaks on campus. In California, all state employees and healthcare workers now have to be vaccinated or face weekly testing. Is that enough? I think that's a good move. California employees who come back to the office are going to be able to know that people around them are not infected. But some California business aren't waiting for mandates. We wanted to keep our um, staff safe. We wanted to keep our patrons safe. Rachel Thomas owns Bar Franca in downtown Los Angeles. She won't let customers through the door until they show proof of being fully vaccinated or a negative COVID test. This is LA County has seen COVID cases surge by more than 700% just in the past month. Are you concerned that the requirement to show proof of vaccination will hurt your business? Since the mask mandate, our business has dropped significantly because more people are unwilling to come out regardless of whether we're testing at the door or not. The CDC now recommends that even fully vaccinated people who have had a known COVID exposure get a test and continue to wear a mask until they have a negative result, citing data that shows that some vaccinated people could spread the Delta variant. Nora. Today really does feel like a tipping point. Lilia Luciano, thank you. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Atlanta area spa shooter pleads guilty to four counts of murder. Let's take a listen to that video from CBS News. 
crime tonight. A 22-year-old Georgia man is serving the first night of four consecutive life sentences in that deadly shooting rampage at several Atlanta area spas. Six Asian women were killed along with two other victims. We get more now from CBS's Mark Strassman. In court, Robert Aaron Long, now 22, tried to explain the unthinkable. A killing spree interlinked with his compulsions, porn, sex, and massage parlors. It never felt like I had a lot of control over um, the, those urges. New details in court, how Long's murderous day began. He binged on porn again, and ashamed intended to kill himself. Long parked outside Young's Asian massage for more than an hour. Brooding changed his mind. To control his addiction, others had to die. Inside mayhem, outside bedlam. Four people shot dead in Cherokee County. The murders Long pleaded guilty to in court today. He then drove to Atlanta at a pair of spas facing each other. He gunned down four more people. Basically punished the people. Of Long's eight murder victims, six were Asian women. Victim Delana Yon's sister is Dana Toole. I think about her every day. So when I went into that courtroom today, it was definitely the hardest thing I've ever done. Prosecutors considered filing hate crime charges, but the evidence failed to show any type of history this defendant had with any form of racism towards any other ethnicity. Also killed, Paul Michaels, a handyman working inside Young's Massage. His widow, Bonnie Michaels. Our love ones will never be forgotten. Their memories will break our hearts and minds. Long will die in prison one way or the other. He has yet to stand trial for the four Atlanta spot killings. And the prosecutor in those cases will seek the death penalty. Nora? Mark Strassman, thank you. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. U.S. infrastructure crumbles as Congress debates plan. Let's take a listen to that video from CBS News. Well, here in Washington tonight, lawmakers say they are making progress on a bipartisan infrastructure bill as our nation's roads and bridges fall apart. CBS's Errol Barnett traveled to Pennsylvania, one of many states in dire need of repairs. The aging 61-year-old South Bridge in central Pennsylvania is one of 12,000 in the state needing repair. On several other bridges, we discovered rust, cracks, and some closed pending fixes. Unfortunately, people only realize that infrastructure isn't working when it breaks. The American Society of Civil Engineers gave Pennsylvania a C- minus on its infrastructure report card. A lot of our bridges were built in the 50s and the 60s which just means that they're reaching the end of their useful life. Bridges are in trouble nationwide. 42% are at least 50 years old, 220,000 need repair work, that includes the Brooklyn Bridge and Washington, D.C.'s Roosevelt Bridge, and nearly 80,000 need to be replaced. Pennsylvania officials say they do not have the more than $20 billion needed to fix their aging infrastructure. The federal government, the feds, haven't really increased uh, the level of funding that they allocate to the state. Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg told CBS News the administration's infrastructure plan will help fill the gaps. The federal role has been underfunded, and you can see it and feel it in the thousands and thousands of miles of highway in this country that are in poor condition, the bridges that are in poor condition. Pennsylvania now one of many states waiting to see if Congress will come through with the funding it needs. Errol Barnett, CBS News, Washington. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Walmart to pay 100% of college tuition for employees. Let's take a listen to that video from CBS News. I right, listen to this. Walmart says it wants to help its employees grow their careers, and today it took a big step to do just that. The nation's largest private employer announced that it will pay 100% of college tuition and books for its 1.5 million full and part-time employees. The company says it will invest nearly $1 billion towards career training and development. That's over the next five years. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. 
And we are going to switch gears now and let's go into the weather. Let's take a look at your weather for this evening. In Boston, 67 degrees. New York, 72 degrees. Washington, D.C., 73 degrees. Charlotte, 73 degrees. Atlanta, 72 degrees. Jacksonville, 76 degrees. Tampa, 79 degrees. And Miami, 78 degrees. New Orleans, 88 degrees. Dallas, 79 degrees. Phoenix, 83 degrees. Los Angeles, 65 degrees. Las Vegas, 83 degrees. And San Francisco, 55 degrees. That is a look at the weather across the United States for this evening. And that does it for this evening edition of the Riley King Newscast right here on the Riley King Network. Thank you for watching and have a great evening, everyone. Good night and goodbye.